Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of The Brainstorm on the 4 News Now YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Matt Gray. We have some strong Arctic air that's going to be moving into the inland northwest, and that means a big change from what's been a very mild kind of month or so of this winter right back into the freezer. So let's get into it. You can see some of the temperatures up in the northern tier of North America in that oof, we got some minus 40s, we've got some minus 30s, and you can see at the very top of your screen winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere actually blowing from Siberia across the North Pole and into the northern stretches uh, of Canada there in the Yukon Territory where I have these temperatures out. And so you can see over in Siberia, they've been seeing some minus 50s, some of the coldest weather they've seen in that part of the world in a long time. And for Siberia, that's saying something. Well, basically, all that cold air is coming across the North Pole. It's coming into Canada. It's coming towards us right now. So as I put this into forward motion over the next couple of days, you can see that Arctic air spreads out across Canada into the northern plains of the United States and pushes across the mountains into the inland northwest. And that is where we will end up with a couple of really chilly days. Now, this is not as bad of an Arctic cold snap as what we saw in December, but it is certainly not going to be uh, not going to be fun. That's certainly the case. So here's Saturday afternoon, the bulk of the Arctic air will be working its way through the narrow crevices and valleys of the Rocky Mountains and slowly but surely entering the inland northwest. That will be largely complete by the time we get into Sunday morning. And Sunday morning and Monday morning will be the coldest nights that we will see for a little while here. You can see on Monday as well, as the bulk of the Arctic air actually starts to move on, We'll see some of that residual chilly air in western Montana all the way over into the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene region and it finally starts to ease off as we get into the middle of the week but it's certainly not going to be warm by any stretch of the imagination once this Arctic blast moves on but really it's going to be a couple of days really about three days where we're going to see some three or four days where we're going to see some impactful temperatures and uh, some impactful weather along for the ride here as well. You can see here though by Wednesday, a ridge of high pressure builds. You can see the northward curves uh, in the wind lines and that usually brings us some warmer weather, especially when Arctic air is around. So I wanna show you this because this is going to be a really dramatic drop off. This is Friday afternoon, temperatures in the upper 30s and low 40s likely see a rain snow mix around the region as well on Friday and then look what happens Friday night into Saturday that Arctic air really starts pushing in and by Saturday morning in North Idaho we are flirting with single digit temperatures and by the way this doesn't count for the winds which are really going to be kicking up around that time you get even further into the forecast period here further into the weekend here is Saturday night we get into the 20s, but barely, and we are already starting to fall into single digits around North Idaho at this point in time. And once again, that's not even counting the wind chill, especially for Saturday. We're talking about 20, 25 mile hour sustained winds, gusts getting into the 30s. When your highs are only in the mid 20s, that means it is likely going to be feeling like it's in the single digits above zero for most of the day. And as we get into the night we're going to see some of that sub-zero wind chill around the region most of this is going to be when we're asleep but it is still not going to be all that fun you can see this is early saturday morning even seeing a little bit of sub-zero wind chill potentially bonners ferry and sandpoint i would have to say this is probably a worst case scenario a coldest case scenario our in-house computer model is definitely running on the cold side from what we have seen and i'll show you some other results here uh, in just a minute from some uh some uh, some more uh, noteworthy computer models. But you can see here, still feeling like single digits here, even on Saturday afternoon. So that's really just something that we gotta keep an eye on closely and really gotta be aware that you have to dress much, much warmer this weekend than you would have otherwise. Now let's look at your Sunday morning temperatures because right now the computers are staying pretty consistent with each other. So this is the American Ensemble. So Ensemble, you run a bunch of computer models together. You kind of account for some errors in the computer models. If you just look at one run, sometimes there's little errors that can add up to big errors later on. 
you run them a bunch of times with small variations, you account for all those errors, you get a better picture of what's actually going to happen. So that's why we have here, that's why I call them the ensemble. So this is the American Ensemble at Spokane at about nine degrees early Sunday, kind of early Sunday morning, right as we're in that kind of wake up hour. And you can see that sub-zero cold over western Montana and up to the north. So likely gusty winds coming down from Lake Ponderay, gusty winds coming down through OMAC as well. So those are the areas where we'll see some pretty rough wind chill. Let's flip over here. This is uh, the European Ensemble. It keeps us a little bit colder. This is a little bit earlier in the morning as well. But single digits above zero. But there is a really good th shot, I think, in the northeast tip of Washington and in the panhandle of Idaho to see some actual sub-zero lows. If it doesn't happen Sunday morning, it could pretty easily happen on Monday morning with a combination of some new snow on the ground and it's gonna be staying pretty clear and cold. Clear, cold, still mornings usually mean some pretty cold temperatures. And then we finally take a look at around the same time for the Canadian Ensemble. So you can see up in the mountains, still that's where that sub-zero is, right along the state line here. And around Spokane, we've got uh, single digit temperatures, once again, not accounting for the wind chill. Do think that the coldest morning is going to be Monday morning, but you can see there's still quite a spread here in the computers. Most likely range anywhere from one above zero in Spokane to about 10 above. So most likely in those low single digits, same goes uh, for Sunday morning where we're getting in kind of that 11 to eight degree range is probably the most likely range. But look at the huge drop. I mean, we're talking about starting the weekend off in the 20s on Saturday morning and then a huge drop here as that Arctic air surges in and then a slow recovery from there. As you can see though, there is quite a bit of range once you get into Monday. So how much that cold air gets into the region, how long it sticks around. Still some questions there, but hey, the main thing is it is going to be cold and it's gonna be quite a shock to your system compared to what we have seen around here lately. And you can see as we continue on with the wind chill simulation, this is Saturday night. I mean, that is not particularly fun even if we don't have, uh, even if it's not chilly enough for say some wind chill advisors. All right, if you're still hanging with us, you probably wanna know about some snow as well. Travel into Western Montana, not just because of the cold, uh, but also because of the snow it is gonna be very difficult. You can see right above the top of my corner here is Lookout Pass. We're talking about probably at least a foot worth of accumulation on Lookout Pass. Most of that is going to be on Friday into early Saturday. So some really tough travel conditions there, some tough travel over 4th of July Pass and in the Silver Valley. It's an accumulating snow that's going to be in that two to four inch range around parts of North Idaho as you get further down in the valley, say around parts of Kootenai County. Now you head further west, we're not gonna see as much snow. And we're also, if we see any snow on Friday, a lot of it will end up melting in the middle of the day. So there's uh, the impact from snow at least in the lower elevations, it appears to be more on the minor side, but certainly for the weekend, we're gonna see slick roads, we're likely going to see a little bit of blowing snow, especially across North Idaho with those winds whipping out from Bonners Ferry down to Sandpoint through Coeur d'Alene and eventually out towards Spokane. So that is kind of a rundown on what we're expecting through the weekend. I'll leave you tonight with this. Blowing snow, a tough day on Saturday for travel. Not particularly warm day, but even colder on Sunday as we get ready for a short-lived Arctic blast. So if there's a, maybe you're like me and your pipes froze in the last one and you need to maybe uh, do a little bit of extra preparation, now is the time and you are running out of time. So stay warm, everybody. We'll see you next week on another edition of the brainstorm.